Good morning. Our praises go to our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ. Each and every one of you assemble with us on this morning. Those of you who are with us online, we give all praises to God and we give Him the glory for this morning. Come on, put your hands together. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise for, for His grace and His mercy that afforded us another opportunity to worship and praise his holy name. The Bible said, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in this day. The Bible also says, every day we wake up, that we receive a new mercy. I thank God for mercy this morning. When I was asleep and slumbered in my bed last night, God touched me with the finger of love, gave me another chance to see a day that was not promised to me. Anybody grateful? today for what God has done for you. We woke you up this morning and started you on your way. How many of you are grateful for life today? Amen. That you could be in the hospital, you could be in ICU, you could be in the nursing home, but yet God has given you a reasonable portion of your health and strength and you are here today. God deserves our praise and our glory. Anybody come to come give God praise today? Amen. Amen. We're getting ready to begin our morning worship of this morning. We're going to ask now that our praise and worship team come lead us in praise and worship. And then our deacon brother Morton will come and take us to the throne of grace. Let's have church.
made me bow. Most gracious and wonderful Father. Father, this morning we come saying hallelujah. Father, thanking you for allowing us to see another day. Father, a day that was not promised to us. We thank you for last night's lying down and waking us up this morning with your fingertip of love. Father, thank you for this opportunity to enter into the holies of holies just to say thank you. Father, we have so much to be thankful for. But first and foremost, Father, let us just pause to say thank you for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We thank you for the blood that he shed on Calvary. We thank you for salvation, Father. We thank you for sanctification. We thank you for glorification. We thank you for justification. Father, we just come to the throne of grace just to say thank you. Father, we thank you for waking us up this morning with a roof over our head. Father, clothes on our back. A portion of good health and strength. Father, we just pause right now just to say thank you. Father, we thank you for those under the sound of my voice. Father, those tuned in on Facebook, those tuned in on our prayer line, Father. Just as they differ in name, Father, they may differ in need. That need may be spiritual, Father. That need may be financial. That need may be physical, Father. But whatever the need is, Father, we know that you're able. Father, we just ask that you just touch and meet that need. Father, but if left with the thorn in our side, Father, we ask that we don't sin against thee. Father, we ask that you just give us the faith the size of a mustard seed, Father. Father, we know that you're able, Father, we just ask that you just carry us through these storms. Father, we lift up this nation to you, Father, we know that there's trouble in the land. We know that the coronavirus is still moving, Father. We know that racism is still moving, Father. But we know that you still sit high and you look low. We ask that you just touch right now, Father. Father, we ask that you just touch our families. Touch our homes, Father. Touch our employment, Father. Touch those who don't know you in the pardoning of their sins. Father, we love you, Father. We just ask that you just continue to use First Baptist to be a beacon light. Father, when we ask that we don't know what to do in this pandemic, when we just seem to be bored at home, Father, we just ask that we just take this time to grow closer to you. Father, we ask that you just open up our hearts, open up our minds, Father, so that we are receptive to your word. Father, this is nothing new to you. We know that you are able, Father, we just ask that you just touch right now and move across this land. Father, we lift up First Baptist Church to you this morning, Father. Father, oh, how glorious it was to see our praise and worship team standing before the church, Father, just singing out praises to your name. We ask, Father, that you just continue to bless them. But not only them, Father, but all the members, all the ministries, Father. We ask that you just touch the deacons, Father, continue to give us a certain, a certain part. Touch church leadership, Father, continue to guide them with your wisdom. Father, but now we lift up our pastor to you, Father. Father, we ask that you just continue to crown his head with your wisdom. Hide him behind the cross, Father. Give him preaching power, Father. Fill him with a fresh anointing. Father, we want to hear a word from you. Have him feed us manna from heaven. Father, of course, we know that we have not been what we should be, Father, but we thank you that we're not what we could be. So, Father, again, we just thank you for the forgiveness of sin. Sins of omission and sins of commission. Father, we just ask that you just touch, creating us a clean heart, Father, so that we will serve you, right on our tongue, be a light to our pathway, Father. Father, we just lift up those who are sick and shut in, those who are in hospice, those who are housebound, those who are suffering from this coronavirus, Father, we just ask that you just touch them right now. Father, we lift up the bereaved. Father, we ask that you just continue to be with the Monroe family, the Woodridge family, the Martin family, all those who are missing a loved one. Father, we just ask that you just touch. Hide them underneath your wings of love, Father, and just give them comfort, Father. Please touch right now, Father. Father, we love you. Father, we adore you. Father, we ask that you just make us not only hearers of the word, but make us doers of the word, Father. And Father, when it's all said and done, when it's yours to call and ours to answer, we pray that you give us a resting place in your kingdom. 
And it's in Christ Jesus that I pray this prayer. Amen. Amen.
taking out your precious blood shed on Calvary's heel. The blood that reaches the highest mountain and flows to the lowest valley. We pray now that this blood never loses have the same power now. Change those hearts and minds through your word. We pray now that at this moment we would decrease and you would increase in our lives. That the world could see a lot of you and a lot less of us. That your spirit move in a way that has never moved before. Let an anointing place on our lives through this preaching that would break every yoke. We ask that you would forgive us for our transgressions, our iniquities, for whatever area in our lives that we have missed the mark. We pray now that grace would intercede would give us what we do not deserve and that's another chance preach to us preach through us that we may receive your word and leave sign off better than we can thank you for angelic voices on this morning. Allow them to use them that they may sing glory to your highest name. We ask that you would continue to bless their voices and give them the strength they need during this period and this time that they can minister those who are listening, they can inspire through their singing, that they can encourage and galvanize those who are downtrodden. We pray for them, their gifts, that their gifts can make room for them, that people may see there is a reality in serving the true and living God. For God, we are many members in one body. God, you are the head of this body. Help us to listen to you that your spirit may direct us the way that you would have us to go. Now be with us now as we go into your word. That we can hide your word in our hearts that we may not sin against you. Help us to be sensitive to your voice. So when we hear your voice, we will not harden our hearts. Touch us now. Touch those who are listening and have listening ears. That we can not only just be hearers, but doers of your word. We ask it now in the Son Jesus through Christ we pray. Amen. Thank God for. Praise and worship team with us on this this morning. To pray, God will continue to utilize them as we continue to navigate through our trials of this coronavirus. Go with me to me story finding the gospel of John. Gospel according to John, second chapter, 
want to just read three verses, but I would that you would read this story in its entirety at your leisure. John, second chapter, New Living Translation. It reads, the next day there was a wedding celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. And Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. The wine supply ran out during the festivities. And so Jesus' mother told him they have no more wine. Amen. Amen. I want to talk from the subject when the wine runs out. When the wine runs out. The grass will the flowers fade away, but the word of God will stand forever. The text this morning, we are introduced to a wedding in Canaan. Jesus and his mother and Jesus' disciples are on the guest list. There is wine at this wedding. And in this text that we have before us, Wine is a symbol of life. Wine represents the things that we need to make us happy. But the Bible says that while the wedding was taking place, that John emphasizes that the wine ran out. But it's not until the wine runs out that the name of Jesus is even mentioned. I think, I think Brother Martin, that's typical for many of us as Christians. We only mention his name when something runs out. It is, it is when our money runs out. It, it is when our, our source runs out. It is when our joy runs out. It's when our family and our friends run out. It is when our health and our strength runs out. As long as we got wine, we're fine. But when we run dry, we'll give Jesus a try. It seems that in most of our lives that Jesus is always the last resort. Right. The wine is gone. There's not much of a party when the wine is gone. Now, you don't have to have wine to have fun. But when you show God Wine, you can have some fun. Do I have a witness here? What do you do when the wine is gone? The wine is gone and they went to Jesus to help fix the problem. Jesus, mother is there. And she mentions the problem to Jesus. Maybe Mary had it figured out when, she, when the songwriter said, Oh, what needless pain we bear. Because the first thing Mary does is bring the problem directly to Christ. She looks at the servants that are at the wedding. And says, whatever he tells you to do, 
you do it. You read the remaining of the story. The text says that, that Jesus sees some water pots. And tells the servants to fill the water pots with water. They fill the water pots with water. And the water turns into wine. Can I get a witness? That, 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 that's the just of the story. But there's a few things I, I want to, to bring to our attention this morning. And then I'll bid you farewell. Do you want to hear it? No, number one, th this, text, this text says a few things. Number one, it says something about a relationship with privileges. A relationship with privileges. Watch the text. Jesus' mother brought the problem to him. She says, Jesus, they have no one. Jesus looks at his mother and says, what does that have to do with me? Number one, running out of wine is not a Jesus problem. Do I have a witness? Number two, running out of wine is not a real problem anyway. A real problem would be a paralyzed man laying on a mat who has four friends carrying him because he cannot get to Jesus himself. A real problem would be a man with leprosy that's begging Jesus to touch him because he's tired of being unclean. A real problem would be a woman who has a blood issue for 12 years, who has spent all her money on doctors and none to avail. A real problem would be a woman that's burying her son because in reality, a mother is not supposed to bury her son. A son is supposed to bury her mother. A real problem is when your friend has been dead for four days. And it makes the Savior of the world cry over his grave. A real problem is a father that has a 12-year-old daughter sick unto death. Can I get a witness here? A real problem is when a blind man who's been blind all his life is sitting on side the road crying, Son of David, have mercy. But running out of wine is not a real problem. Running out of wine does not seem like a problem that would necessitate a divine intervention. But what I like about Jesus is that if it's a problem to you, it's a problem to him. In fact, Jesus says, my hour is not yet come. In other words, Jesus is saying, this miracle is not even on my schedule. That this miracle is not even on the itinerary. But how many know that when you have a relationship with Jesus, He'll do things for you that he won't do for everybody else. You don't even have to be on his agenda. You don't even have to be on his itinerary. He will put you on the list. He will add you to the calendar. And I'm not here today because I've been so good. I don't have what I have because of my merits. I'm, I'm not a, a preacher of the gospel. Pastor one of the best churches in Texas City. The only thing different between me and that is that I put my faith in Christ. I have a relationship with him. And when I did that, he started opening doors that I could not open on my own. The only reason you live where you live, the only reason you drive where you drive, the only reason you do what you do is because you have a relationship with Christ. Can I get a witness? The only reason you haven't lost your mind, the only reason you're not locked up, the only reason why you're not dead and gone is because for some reason Jesus put you on the calendar. You got miracles that you don't deserve. You're working in places that you do not deserve. You're driving cars that you do not deserve. You're living in homes you do not deserve. You're living in neighborhoods you do not deserve. You got your head and your strength that you do not deserve. And the only reason why is because you got a 
relationship with God. And when you have a relationship with God, God will do things for you that he will not do for everybody else. Can I get a witness? Somebody ought to testify with me. The relationship will give you faith. Relationship with God will give you grace. When you have a relationship with God, he'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. When you have a relationship with God, he will anoint your head with oil. Your cup will run over. Goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. Can I get a witness? When you have a relationship with God, you can wait on him. He'll renew your strength. You will mount with wings as eagles and you will run and not be weary. When you have a relationship with God, can I get a witness? You can be young and you can be old, but you'll never see the righteous forsaken, nor see begging for bread. I'm trying to tell somebody, if you just get in a relationship with God, God will put you on his agenda. God will put you on his itinerary. There are blessings that I enjoy right now, not because of my works, not because of my deeds, it's because I got a relationship with God. Abraham will tell you, a relationship with God, you'll have a bouncing baby boy with an AARP discount. When you got a relationship with God, Moses will tell you, you can get a free pass out of Egypt without a travel agent. When you got a relationship with God, David will tell you, you can kill a giant with a slingshot in one rock. I'm trying to tell you, when you got a relationship with God, Job will tell you, you can get cut off from everything and God will give you double for your trouble. When you got a relationship with God, Peter will tell you, you can cut off your nickel's ear and not even get a misdemeanor. I'm trying to get somebody. When you got a relationship with God, Paul will tell you, your life can be shipwrecked and you can still make it on broken pieces. Am I talking to anybody here today that can understand that what you enjoy in life today has nothing to do with you? It's all because you have a relationship. He'll put you on his agenda. Jesus said, my hour has yet not come. But since you are a mother, I'll do it for you. Do I have a witness? A relationship with, with privileges. And then secondly, he said something about how the mother remembered him in the bride. Watch this. Text says this. That Mary says they have no wife. Jesus says, what does it have to do with me? The next thing Mary does, she says, whatever he tells you to do, you do it. She didn't even address what Jesus says. She just turns to the servants and says, whatever he tells you to do, you do it. Never to mind that Jesus told her, what does that have to do with me? She ignores what Jesus said. And says, whatever he tells you to do. Jesus said, wait a minute. I ain't say I'm going to do nothing. But yet, she looks at the servant. And says, whatever he tells you to do, you do it. Now watch this. Because up to this point, Jesus had never performed a public miracle. And so, Brother Roger, if that be the case, why would Jesus... Mother, go to him and ask him to do a miracle. If he had never done a public miracle, why would she ask Jesus to do a miracle in the public? Can I get a witness? Why would she ask him to do a miracle in the first place? I, I would like to, to suggest to us that she must have seen something in the crowd that would make her believe that he was able to do it in the public. Do I have a witness? Can, can, can I just suggest to us before we move on that, that there would be some demonstrations you would show folk in the public that they won't understand nor will they comprehend because of what Jesus has done for you 
in your pride. They, they won't understand your commitment. They won't understand your dedication. They won't understand why you keep smiling. They won't understand why you got joy in your heart. They see the product, but they don't see the performance. It's in the private moments that God does his greatest miracles. It's in your private moments when God tells you to hold on. It's in the private moments that God tells you everything is going to be alright. It's in the private moments when God tells you to lift up your head over ye gates. It's in the private moments that God tells you you can keep on keeping on. I got your back. Can I get a witness? It's in the private moments I'm talking about behind closed doors when God tells you to hang in there that you don't give up that it's going to be alright that this too shall come to pass. It's deep down in the bosom of your heart when nobody else around. I'm talking about when you're in your prayer closet all by yourself. When you're in your car riding down the street when the windows are up. It is in the moments when you're in the hospital room and no nurses and doctors that came in. It's when you're in your solitude place of a life that God tells you it's going to be alright. No, most of my greatest miracles don't happen at church on Sunday morning, but most of my greatest miracles happen on Saturday night. Can I get a witness? It's in my private moments that God speaks to my heart. And so when you see me on the outside, it's because of what God has already told me down on me. Do I have a witness in here? When, when God has performed miracles in the private for you, you don't care what they say about you. They, they can lie on you. They can, they can scandalize your name. They can criticize you. They can complain and critique and even offer false commentary. It won't matter because as soon as you get with Jesus behind your own door, can I get a witness? Jesus will tell you a few things. He'll tell you weeping will endure for a night. But joy ain't gonna come in the morning. He'll, he'll tell you trouble don't last always. He'll tell you I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He'll tell you that I'll make your enemies your footstool. Whatever you do, don't abandon your one on one with Jesus. Because most of your greatest miracles would happen in the pride. It says something about. It says something about a relationship with privileges. But then secondly, it says something about how she remembered in the Bible. But thirdly, it says something about the responsibility of the people. Watch the text. Mother, the mother tells the servant to do whatever he tells you to do. Now, remember, God will never bless what you are not willing to do yourself. Let me say that again. God will never bless what you are not willing to do yourself. Mary says, whatever he tells you to do, you do it. It might look stupid. It might sound crazy. But whatever he tells you to do, you do it. Can I get a witness here? And so she asked the servants to get involved because a miracle will not take place until you get involved. Can I get a witness? And sometimes you got to be able to do the ridiculous in order to receive the miraculous. You got to be a part of it. Because if a miracle is going to take place, you got to get involved. The miracle will not take place unless you are a participant. Because if you do your part, somebody know God will do his part. Here it is in the text. I'm not kidding, it's right here. Jesus tells them to go get six water. Fill them 
with water. Now, here's the question, Sister Ray. The need is for wine, but Jesus mentions water. What are you doing when your need is for wine, but Jesus gives you water? Can I get a witness? I believe that sometimes Jesus is trying to say, if you can be faithful with the water before he gives you the wine. If you are faithful over a few things, the Bible says he'll make you ruler over many. Deliver me from envious and jealous folk. The ones that envious and jealous over other people's success. Have you ever thought that maybe they are enjoying the wine because they were faithful with the water? Do I have a witness? It's, it's no need for any of us to hate on each other because God got enough wine to fill all our pots. Do I have a witness? Maybe God is trying to teach you a lesson. That if you are faithful with your water, God will turn your water into wine. Ain't no need you hating on nobody. Ain't no need you tripping on somebody else. Ain't no need you tripping on other people's position on your job. Ain't no need you tripping on somebody else's car and house and how much money they make and how they dress and how they wear their hair. That ain't none of your business. Maybe you're seeing the wine because they've been faithful with the water. Do I have a witness here? Jesus said, get those pots and fill them with water. Can I get a witness? Fill them with water. Because if you're faithful with your water, then I'll show you your wine. Do I have a witness? Here it is. Relationship with privileges. Do you remember him in the private? There's a responsibility of the people, but then finally, you got to remain at the party. The text says they fill those water pots to the brim. John says it was two or three firkins apiece. That's 20 to 30 gallons, which is a total of 180 gallons of water. John is showing us that before the miracle took place, they had to go through a process. Because it takes time to fill six pots with 30 gallons of water. This, this type of miracle will not happen overnight. That, that it will not happen instantly. And I believe the problem with many of us is that we want instant blessings. Can I get a witness? And, 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 and we don't want to go through the process. We don't want to let patience have her perfect work. We, we want instant results. We want to get to the bottom of the line as quickly as possible. But sometimes God is trying to teach us that you got to learn how to go through the process. I get a witness. No, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt that Jesus could have spoke to the pots and the pots would have instantly turned into wine. But, but Jesus does something contrary to what we would think. Jesus says, go and fill those water pots. Because I want you to understand that where you are now, it took some time to get you to where you're going. Do I have anybody want to testify today? That, that where you are now ain't where you was yesterday. That it took some months, it took some years, it took a process. You had to go through some hell, you had to go through some high water to get where you are. You ain't always drove the car you drive. You ain't always work where you work. You ain't always live where you live. You had to start from the bottom and work your way to the top. It takes time, it takes patience, it takes endurance. You ain't gonna get nowhere fast. You for how to be remain endurance. Go fill those pots. In other words, this miracle is not going to happen overnight. It's not going to be 
a next day and have it. Okay, how much extra you pay to get it faster? This is not on your time. And so they had to go fill those water pipes. In other words, there were some people at the way who would have to sit there and wait until the water pipes were filled. Maybe God is speaking to us today. Maybe that's why we're in the predicament we're in right now. Because too many people don't want to remain at the point. We want to go out and do what we want to do. We want to gather back all around the country, all around the world, go to the social gatherings and do what we want to do. And sometimes God has to show you that this miracle ain't going to happen overnight. Do I have a witness? But you got to remain at the party. And these people stuck to it. They had to walk down the river and then walk back up to the party. Then y'all hear what I'm saying? They had to walk down to the river and then walk back up to the party. They had to go back down to the river and walk back up to the party. There was there was no water system in the huts. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. But they had to walk down to the river and walk back up to the hut. Trip after trip. Step after step. Back down to the river. Back up to the point. Still no results. Still no water. But the good news is that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So if I can just use my sanctified imagination, I believe these, these servants just kept on stepping. Do I have a witness? I don't know who I'm talking to today, but somebody needs to keep on stepping. Keep on making your trips to your job. Keep on making your trips to the prayer closet. Keep on keeping on. Don't focus on the pots. Focus on the potential. Don't, don't, don't focus on the water. Focus on the way you make. Because Jesus is able to turn your water into wine. Whatever you do, brothers and sisters, hang on in there. Don't leave the party because how many know it's not about how the party starts, but it's how the party ends. Do I have a witness? The Bible says when the last pot was filled, they took the water to the master of the bank. And when he tasted it, it wasn't water anymore. Somebody ought to shout right here that when the man tasted what was in the water wasn't the water anymore. But Jesus had turned that water into wine. What is the message, Pastor Bell? The message is when your wine runs out, Jesus is able to refill. Can I get a witness? Now, I can't tell you how it happened. I can't tell you when it happened. All I can tell you is that um, it happened. I believe it by faith. Them it will happen. It can happen for you as well. If you believe that God is 
provide Jesus to the way. Jesus can do it for you. Jesus can, can turn it around for you. Jesus can do miracles for you. I pray the worship team is coming. And I don't know where you are, who you are. But right now somebody's at their wit's end. You like Papa, he said, I've had all I can stand. And I can't stand no more. You're at the end of the road. And you don't see a way out. But I got good news for you today. What made the miracle really take place is that they put Jesus on the guest list. If you invite him into your life, I'm not saying you won't have leaks, but I am saying you won't run out. Because what comes out of the bottom, Jesus will refill it on the top. I'm not here today, I'm not standing here today because I hadn't had any leaks. I'm just here today because I invited Jesus to my party. And whenever I get low, Jesus fills me up again. And the joy that I have, the world did not give it to me. And the world didn't give it, the world cannot take it away. I have the joy of the Lord. No, I don't have everything going right in my life, but I got Jesus. And when you have Jesus, you got everything you need. Just invite him. Invite him. And when your wine gets low, when your joy gets low, when your peace gets low, when your money gets low, Jesus is there. And whatever he tells you to do, just do it. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that do. Just seek him. Just have faith. God can turn that thing around for you. I believe it today. I want to offer this to you. I want to offer this to you. That if you would just give Jesus a try.
bow our heads in word of prayer. We trust and hope that the word has deposited some faith seeds into your life. That you would receive it with meekness, the engrafted word. doers of the word that is likened unto a man that builds his house on rock. We pray right now that the seed will fall on good ground. Obey and then pay. 
over the next few uh, weeks, all the way up until July 19th, there will be a series of commercials that come on Facebook Live. We're asking that you take these commercials, <laughs> post them, share them with your family, with your friends, and talk about how your pastor has been a good pastor, a good shepherd to you over the last 14 years. On July the 18th, we will have a drive-by celebration parade for our pastor on that day. It will begin at 6 p.m. here at First Baptist Church. We're asking that you please wear a mask and remain in your vehicles. And at this time, you're going to be able to bless our pastor with any monetary or physical gifts that you may have for him. Our brother will be in the parking lot and have envelopes for you. And if you can't, if you can't attend that day, you can see one of the members and we can get your envelope on that day. And then on July 19th, we will celebrate our pastor. We know that we can't come here as a clock, but we can send our love and we can send our blessings his way on that day. So again, I'm asking you to pop, pray, obey, and pay. And even if you're not a member and you've been blessed through these series of sermons during the COVID-19 shutdown, we ask that you just pop with us for our pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Stay and Appreciation Committee, Sister Dorothy Godfrey, our chairman, Sister Tawana, our sister. Uh, we, we want to continue to lift up uh, prayers for our, our city of Shady, and I mentioned those two names in my prayer because they are, are in the hospital. Sister Edna, Sister Merchant, Celine Merchant, and we want to continue to pray, pray for them. Amen. And we'll see you again uh, Wednesday night at 6 p.m. for our our series on saluting the shepherd. And uh, our teacher Wednesday will be Brother Wilkins who will be teaching on praying for your pastor according to the scripture. So we want to lift him up in prayers. I want to uh, pause to thank Sister Asher Hamilton for carrying the praise and worship load for some seven or eight weeks. Amen. She is happy to have some angelical voices uh, to help her with, with singing. Amen. It's hard doing it all by yourself. Amen. So we, we thank God for our praise and worship team who was back with us. We want to continue to be responsible as we uh, live and move about through our community. Uh, continue to mask up. Please wear your mask that we can bring these, this curve down that we can come back to our church. Amen. Because we're not coming back until the numbers drop. Amen. It's going to drop like it's hot. Amen. Because the numbers are extremely too high for us to take the risk to have you come to the corporate worship. So, please be responsible. You can do your part by practicing social distancing and wearing your, your mask. Amen? Amen. So again, we thank you. We are, are praying that you will stay safe and we'll see you again on this coming Wednesday night. We want to again pause to uh, allow you to give toward our um, Givelify, those of you who are on our um, internet giving, give through the Givelify. We have, uh, we're giving you now the liberty to designate what you want your money to go to. So if you want your money to go to Dollar for Scholar, you want your money to go to Tribe or Ties and Offering, we're, we're fixing it where you can do that now. The only thing you cannot give toward that is the road, which is relief, reducing our loan liberally. You still have to fill out an envelope for that particular one, but if you want to give toward the 25 you want to give toward our Dollar for Scholar Ties and Offering Tribe. Just please designate that and we're going to be working on getting some links. But all you have to do is just click the link on where you want it to go. Please understand that when you do that, make sure you designate what tribe you are in. Because we have no way of knowing that unless you tell us. Amen? So we want to take that moment out uh, for us to give. I, I want to commend those who are continuously contributing to our church. Even though you're not here, you are contributing. Sort of like how I'm doing at the gym. I pay my monthly gym 
every month, but I don't go. <laughs> Amen. And, and it's because of me that the gym is still alive. Amen. Even though I'm not there, but they take the money out of my account every month. And so, uh, even though you're not here, we thank you for loving your church enough to continue to pay your tithes and your offering and giving. If you are not contributing to your church, then shame on you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God, God keep you this hour. Prayer, let us all stand and we'll be ready to be dismissed. Let the church say amen. Let the church